Boy, what a week. Yes. You know? But um, I'm glad to know that the Lord is still God. Amen. I just want to let you know this morning that the grave is still empty and the throne is still occupied. Amen. Okay? Nobody has uh, taken the throne from Jesus. Amen? Amen? And nobody will because he is the king forever. And we have, we are translated, Colossians says, into the kingdom of his dear son. So uh, our kingdom is not a kingdom of this earth. Uh, I mean, we, we vote to make it as best we can for people. And uh, sometimes their votes count, sometimes they don't. But, um, you know, I'm not here to be uh, political or anything like that. But I will, and I won't hold back from preaching against the sins of the nation. Amen. Because um, if you uh, are for um, abortion, murder of the innocent, if you are... You know, uh, I think uh, that uh, things that are the, the Word of God speaks against are okay. You know, then uh, we have a thing to say about that. And a lot of times, you know, we go through times in our life and our hearts really get troubled, right? Like this week. I mean, how many, uh, how many of us have felt like our heart at times was in our throat this week and, and different things like that and, even, and maybe even, um, um, uh, you know, troubled in our heart because we see the uh, um, the lying and the cheating and everything going on and um, uh, it causes uh, heart trouble doesn't it it causes us to sometimes get stressed out you know and everything's like that and um, you know uh, Jesus and we have to be like um, um, the disciples now, the disciples, they were going along pretty good with Jesus for about three and a half years, you know. They were going along and um, uh, they were uh, thinking, well, you know, this is the Son of God. We believe Jesus is the Son of God. And somehow or another, we don't know exactly how He's going to do it, but somehow or another, the kingdom of God is going to come and He's going to be king. Matter of fact, they argued uh, uh, among themselves about who would be the greatest in the kingdom, Right? Because they thought that the King Jesus was here and he was going to set up his uh, kingdom uh, right, uh, right then and there. But that isn't how it was. And so there had to be a, a shift in their minds. There had to be a change in their minds about the kingdom of God. There had to be a change in their minds about what they were going to have to go through. And you know, for years in America, we have had this um, illusion, I think, in the churches that, you know, we're just going to kind of go along and be, and be uh, you know, happy and free. And then all of a sudden, the rapture is going to take place and, and uh, get, the God's going to get us out of here and everything's going to be hunky-dory and we're going to have to escape. You know, uh, we, we can escape all these things that's coming on the earth. That's kind of how we thought for a lot of years. But now... We're going to have to go through a change of mind about the kingdom of God. And we're going to have to put the kingdom of God as the forefront in our mind. And so when we pray, we pray, uh, our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. I mean, the kingdom of God is in heaven, right? And it says, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. So we are praying for the government of God, we're praying for the kingdom of God to come to this earth, right? And so when we pray for the kingdom of God to come uh, to this earth, we are uh, praying what Jesus taught us to pray, right? He taught us to pray that. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done. Give us this day our daily bread. Now I know that uh, uh, we haven't had that problem in America. We've had too much to eat over the years and different things, and it's obvious on a lot of us, but I mean... Um, <laughs> true <laughs> and uh, so but anyway uh, uh, it was this day our daily bread why does it say our daily bread instead of my daily bread because we need to be fed in spirit soul and body right 
I mean, we've been, we've been you know, uh, focused on the body so much, we've left, left out the spirit and the soul. And, you know, we are uh, so uh, into uh, the body and soul in our churches, we've left off the spirit, you see. But it's going to take the spirit of God, just like it did in the disciples, to get us through these last days. I mean, we cannot do it by enthusiasm. We cannot do it by new worship. We cannot do it by old worship. we got to do it by the Spirit of God. You see, and so when we pray, give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us of our debts as we forgive our debtors. You know what we're saying right there? God, I want you to forgive me just like I forgive others. And lead us not into temptation. Boy, we're tempted to do a lot, a lot of things this week, right? Mm -hmm. Let me out. I'm going to kill him. No. <laughs> <laughs> I know what y'all are thinking. Because I'm thinking the same stuff, you know. Um, you know, lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Now the disciples, they kind of were getting kind of stressed out too. Uh, John, um, chapter, uh, let's go to, um, uh, let's go to uh, John chapter 13, verse 31. Can you bring that up, uh, John 13, 31? Yeah. Um, I never know how the Lord is going to preach a sermon until I get up here a lot of times. Uh, I've had some ideas, uh, I mean, my mind like yours has been going crazy this week. Um, now, it says, uh, now this is talking about uh, Judas Iscariot. Um, he, uh, he, was, he, he was left, uh, left from the company. And, um, you know, they said, well, they didn't know who Judas was. He, they didn't know Judas was going to betray the Lord because Judas was kind of esteemed. Uh, among the rest of the disciples. I mean, after all, he was the treasurer, right? And so uh, they just they didn't even know when he left that Judas was the one who was going to betray Jesus. And But it says here, um, uh, let's go back to um, verse 20, 25 and 13, 20, 25. Then um, he then lying on Jesus' breast, so this is John, saith unto him, Lord, who is it? Who is it that's going to betray you? And so that's what John was asking. And, um, he, and Jesus answered, He it is to whom I give a sop when I have dipped it. And when he had dipped the sop, he gave it to Judas Iscariot, the son of Simon. And after the sop, Satan entered into him. Now this is the first person in history that it actually said Satan entered into. Now, we, we have demon possession, we have all kinds of things, but Satan actually entered in to Judas Iscariot. All right? So Satan entered into him, and then said Jesus unto him, uh, that thou doest do quickly. Now no man at the table knew for what intent he spake this unto him, for some of them thought that because Judas had the bag that Jesus had said to him, buy those things uh, that we have need of against the feast, or that he should give something to the poor. So Judas was the treasurer. He was kind of esteemed among the rest of the disciples. They didn't know why he went, was uh, going out. Uh, he then, having received the sop, went immediately out, and it was night. Therefore, when he was gone out, Jesus said, Now is the Son of Man glorified, and God is glorified in him. If the Son be glorified in him, God shall also glorify him in himself, and shall straightway glorify him. Little children, yet a little while, I am with you. You shall seek me, as I said to the Jews, whither I go, ye cannot come. So now I say to you, a new commandment I give unto you, that you love one another as I have loved you, and that ye love one, uh, that, and that ye also love one another. By this shall all men know that you are my disciples, if you have love one to another. Now that's the evidence that we are Jesus' disciples, if we have love one to another, right? And so um, uh, Simon Peter said to him, Lord, whither goest thou? And Jesus answered him, Whither I go, you cannot follow me now, but you shall follow me afterward. And Peter said unto him, Lord, why not? I, why cannot I follow thee now? I will lay down my life for thy sake. Man, I'll... 
I'll go. I'll lay my life down for you, Jesus. Jesus answered him, Wilt thou lay down thy life for my sake? Verily, uh, verily, I say unto thee, The cock shall not crow until thou hast denied me thrice or three times. So Jesus is getting betrayed. I mean, he's going along three and a half years. I mean, he has a year of popularity where he had this popular status. Everybody was coming to him to get healed. And, and, and he had, and the disciples says, man, this is great. This is going to be how the kingdom of God is. We're just going to be set up. And Jesus is going to be set, uh, king. I mean, there's not going to be any hunger uh, in the world. There's not going to be any disease in the world because Jesus is going to be king. Oh, praise God. And so they're going along. But then they have to change their mind about the kingdom of God. Then all this stuff starts happening. Judas betrays the Son of God and he leaves the company. And so all this stuff starts happening. Peter says, Lord, I'll go to the death with you. And, and Jesus says, no, you won't. You're going to deny me. Three times before the cock crows. Wow. And sure enough, that happened. Then he sits down with his disciples. In chapter 14, verse 1. Jesus says this, I want to say this to you today, church. Let not. Now, I'm going to stop right there. When you see the words, let not, your heart be troubled. You can let your heart be troubled, right? I mean, you can dwell on this stuff until you get sick. But Jesus said, let not your heart be troubled. Proverbs says, keep your heart with all diligence, for out of it are the issues of life. And there's a lot of, of people that are having heart trouble in the world today. There's a lot of people that are, are, are just mad, and there's a lot of people that are sick, and they're, they're, uh, there's a lot of people that, uh, you know, look at the injustices in the world today, and, and there's a lot of people that are just saying, oh, I just, you know, I don't know what to do. And, uh, you know, like, let's pick up arms or let's do this or that. But Jesus said, let not your heart be troubled. Let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God? Believe also in me. Now, I know you believe in God. But do you believe in Jesus? Jesus said, you believe in God? Believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. Now, this isn't the kingdom of the world. This is the Father's house, okay? In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. And so, I, I, uh, I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go to prepare a place for you, I will come again to receive you unto myself, that where I am, there you may be also. You see, so Jesus was telling the disciples, get your eyes and mind off this wicked world. Get your eyes and mind off the government. Get your eyes and mind. Because I'm going to go and I'm going to be uh, crucified. I'm going to go and they're going to kill me. I'm going to go and they're going to beat me beyond recognition. Get your eyes off of that and get them onto God. Amen. And let your heart not be troubled. You tell your heart, heart, don't be troubled. I mean, that's what we need to do. Let not your heart be troubled. You see, it says, um, verse 4, Whether I go, you know, and the way you know. And Thomas, that's old Doubting Thomas. Remember Doubting Thomas? <laughs> Thomas said to him, Lord, we know not whether you're going or where you're going, and how can we know the way? Lord, how can we know? Do we lose direction sometimes in our lives? Do we ask the question, I don't know which way to turn, God? That's what Thomas would say. We don't know the way. Jesus says unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. You see, If ye had known me, ye should have known my father also. And from henceforth ye know him and have seen him. Philip saith unto him, Lord, show us the father and it will suffice us. They had this thing confused in their minds too, didn't they? See, it says, Jesus saith unto him, 
Have I been so long time with you, and yet hast thou not known me, Philip? And he that have seen me has seen the Father. How sayest thou then, show us the Father? Believe not that I am in the Father, and the Father in me. The words that I speak in you, I speak not of myself, but the Father that dwelleth in me, he doeth the works. Believe me that I am in the Father, and the Father in me, or else believe me for the very works' sake. Verily, verily, I say unto you, or truly, truly, I say unto you, he that believeth on me the works that I do, uh, shall he do also, and greater works than these shall you do, because I go to my Father. And whatsoever you shall ask in my name, I will do it, uh, that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If you shall ask anything in my name, I will do it. Now, here Jesus is telling his disciples, let not your heart be troubled. And there were several reasons why the hearts of his disciples became troubled or frightened at this time. Judas had left the company. The Lord had been speaking of going away. He had just been warning Peter that before the cock would crow, he would deny him three times. And our hearts also may often get troubled when we look at the signs of the times or when we look within and see our own, see our own sins and failures. Remember I say, you look, look around, you're going to get stressed. You look inside, you're going to get depressed. But if you look up, you're going to get blessed, right? Our hearts are troubled at times in our lives when the death of a loved one leaves us in sorrow. You know, heart trouble is a common malady, but the word and the work of Jesus Christ is a perfect remedy. He came to bind up the broken in heart and set the captives free. He came that we might have eternal life, that where he is, there we may be also. Today, if you do not know the direction that you need to go, I want you to hear the words of Jesus. And I want us, I want us to look at seven elements of this passage of the Holy Scripture today. Number one, the power of Christ. I want us to look at the power of Christ. You believe in God, believe also in me. God, me, to believe in me is to believe in God. I and my Father are one. What a comfort to a sinful, soulful, uh, sorrowful soul to know that he who suffered and died for sinners has all the authority of Almighty God. You see, a lot of people say, well, I just don't know how to get to God. And they make God up in their minds and, and different things. But all you have to do is turn to Jesus. Because he is God. You see, Jesus said, all power, all power is given unto me in heaven and earth. Matthew 28, 18, all power is given unto me in heaven uh, and earth. Now, uh, all power means all, and that's in heaven and in earth. Trembling soul, affrighted at your own guilt and the coming death and judgment, let not your heart be troubled. Believe in him. Uh, he is the one who suffered and died and took the judgment and wrath of God so that we would not have to. The power of Christ. Number, another thing I want us to look at, the many mansions. In my father's house are many mansions. You know, I, uh, I say it sometimes at a funeral of a loved one that knew Christ. Well, I guess God got done with their mansion. <laughs> Amen? Amen, yes. You know? I mean, if he created all this in six days, just imagine what he could, what he's got laid up for us in heaven. You know what I'm saying? And we don't need to put our minds on there. Because, man, if we put our minds down on this earth, we are going to get stressed out. We are going to get lied to. We're going to, yeah, I mean, we're just, our hearts are going to be troubled. We've got to put our mind on God. Put our mind on the Word of God. I mean, I want you to be like Chandra. Get up here and just... You know, it, it overflows out of her. It just bubbles out at the Holy Ghost, right? I mean, that's a, that's the way we ought to be. And and, uh, and different things. So many mansions in my father's house are many mansions, verse 2 says. The, 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 the many mansions is another way of saying there's plenty of room. There's plenty of room. You know, when Jesus died on the cross, there were two thieves that died on either side of him. But one of the thieves asked Jesus if he would remember him when he came into his kingdom. And Jesus said, this day you will be with me in paradise. This was the man that never got a chance to do any good deeds or never even got a chance to be baptized. But the mercy of God met him there that day. And there was plenty of room for him in God's house. One thief was saved so that none of us may despair, but only one so that none of us may presume. 
you see. Not only is the, do I want to tell you about the power of Christ in many mansions, I want to tell you about a prepared place. I want to tell you about a prepared place. I go to prepare a place for you. He went to the cross and gave, and, and the grave to prepare salvation for us. He went out of the grave, rising from the dead, that he might prepare eternal life for us. He ascended into heaven that he might prepare a home for us. The prepared place will correspond with the preparedness of the soul here by the work of the Holy Spirit. Heaven is a prepared place for prepared people. And the way that we prepare our souls is to believe in the revelation that God has sent of himself and his name is Jesus. Now, I want you to understand that the glory of God is going to be known throughout the whole earth. It says that in the word of God several times. I'm not sure exactly how God is going to pull it off, but his glory is going to be known throughout the whole earth. And so, uh, because a lot of times, you know, we see uh, the, the world, we, we turn on the television, which is a, probably not a really good idea uh, these days. But, I mean, we see all these, uh, the heathen raging and the people imagining vain things and people lying and people cheating and people, you know, are corrupt and different things. The word of God says we know the whole world lieth in wickedness. See, it won't be a, just an American thing. It'll be a whole world thing. You see, but in Luke 21, it says, there's a snare that shall come on upon the whole earth. Okay. So when Jesus gets us out of here, it's going to be like a trap is shut on the whole earth. Now, the coming again, number four, I will come again. Surely just as Jesus came the first time, he'll come again. I want to go to 1 Thessalonians 4, 13 through 18. 1 Thessalonians 4. First Thessalonians 4. Verse 13. It says, But I would not have you to be ignorant, brethren, concerning them which are asleep, that ye sorrow not, even as others which have no hope. Now these are the ones, that, it says asleep, but it means the ones that have died in, in Christ. It means the ones that have died. Um, now there's others, there's two categories of people. There's some that have, are asleep, um, and there's some that have no hope here, if you look at that. Um, it says, um, But I would not have you to be ignorant, brethren, concerning them which are asleep, that you sorrow not even as others which have no hope. So there's a, there's a group of people that have no hope, and then there's a group of people that just went to sleep in God, right? Because if you're dead with Jesus Christ, we sang it this morning, if you are dead with Jesus Christ, I'm, I live with him too, right? I'm raised with him too. So we die the first time to ourselves. We die in Christ uh, on the cross and we are raised to walk in newness of life with him. That's what baptism represents, right? We baptize you in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost. You're buried with him. Yeah, you're dead and you're buried with him by baptism, but you're raised again to walk in newness of life, you see. So when you're a Christian, you die the first time in your salvation. You die the first time. And so that if we die the first time, we will not face the second death. And I'm going to get that into that in just a minute. Uh, it says um, uh, here, it says in verse 14, For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so them also which sleep, in Jesus will God bring with him. So this means that, that have already died in Jesus. Uh, for this uh, we say unto you by the word of the Lord. That we which are alive and remain to the coming of the Lord. Shall not prevent them which are asleep. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout. With the voice of an archangel. With the trump of God and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Uh, then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with him in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so shall we ever be with the Lord. Wherefore, comfort one another with these words. I'm telling you, it don't matter how bad it gets down here. Jesus is coming to get us. Amen. A yeah. hey, prepared place for you. And Jesus said, I'm coming to get you. And I'm coming again. Uh, Jesus said that I will receive you unto myself. That where I am, there you may be also. All the promises of God in the word are yes and amen. Like we said last week uh, and uh, the and another thing i want to uh, bring up is the eternal home where i am there you may be also we're not going this is not our home this world is just the world it's an evil world we're just passing through it our home is in heaven with jesus right and we need to keep our our minds uh, in, uh, on the lord are the eternal home where 
Where I am, there you may be also. Meanwhile, the mist of the earth partly blinds our eyes to the glories of that place uh, where he is. God hath exalted him far above all principalities and powers and given him a name that is above every name. He is seated at the right hand of God, crowned with glory and honor. And where he is, there his beloved bride shall be uh, to behold the glory and to glory in the beholding it. Uh, the place of honor purchased by the Lord Jesus Christ as the Redeemer is to be shared shared by the redeemed oh somebody say glory. I mean, glory let not your heart be troubled although the, your circumstances here may be mingled plentifully with trials and sorrows all tears will be wiped away when at home with him where he is and we go to revelation chapter 21 revelation chapter 21 and i'm going to read verses 1 through 8 revelation 21 and i saw a new heaven and new earth for the first heaven and the first earth were passed away and there was no more sea. Now, why would it say there was no more sea? I think the sea means separation. There's no more separation. There was no more sea. And uh, I, John, saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down from God out of heaven, prepared. There it is, the word prepared again. As a bride adorned for her husband. And I heard a great voice out of heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of heaven. Um, behold the tabernacle uh, uh, of God is with men and I will dwell with them and they shall be uh, his people and God himself shall be with them and be their God and God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes and there shall be no more death neither sorrow nor crying neither shall there be any more pain for the former things are passed away this whole life's going to pass away anyway, and we're going to be in the glory with God. And he that sat upon the throne said, Behold, I make all things new. And he said to me, Write, for these words are true and faithful. You want to know what the true and faithful words of God are? You have to get into the Word of God. You cannot get them uh, through CNN or Fox News or any of the any of the television you have to go to the word of God and we're we're going to proclaim the word of God here verse 6 and he said to me it is done I am the alpha and the omega the beginning and the end is a uh, Jesus is the alpha and the omega the beginning and the end. I will give unto him that is a thirst to the fountain of the water of life freely he that overcometh shall inherit all things and I will be his God and he shall be my son Aren't you glad for that? We're going to be in heaven with Jesus. But the fearful and unbelieving and the abominable and murderers and whoremongers and sorcerers and idolaters and all liars shall have their part in the lake which burneth with fire and brimstone, which is the second death. See, it's different for the child of God than it is for a child of Satan. Because, you know, these people that are going around lying, these people that are going around cheating, these go people that are going around murdering babies, the innocent, they're all going to have, the, according to the Word of God, their place in the lake of fire. They're going to go to hellfire. Oh, Pastor Curtis, I don't, I don't believe that. I, I believe you know, what the world says. I'm okay, you're okay. It's all good, right? Man, don't be preaching to me that hellfire and brimstone. So, no, I'm, I'm just reading the Word of God. No, this, this is what the Word of God says. You see, we're going to have an eternal home. And guess what? The heathen are going to have an eternal home. In the lake of fire. A lot of people say, well, you know, hell, that's the, the absence of God. No, hell is the presence of God and His judgment. Mm -hmm. Is what hell is. You know. The other thing I want you to know today is we have blessed assurance. Whether I go, you know, and the way you know. Blessed be His name. We know where He has gone. And also the way into His presence. He has gone to prepare a place for us. And He Himself is the way. Verse 6, I am the way, the truth, and the life. The way to where he is is the way of faith in him. Faith in him always leads to him. We cannot have faith in ourselves. We cannot have faith in a political party. We cannot have faith in anything. We need to put our faith in Jesus. Period. He's the one that died, was buried, and rose again the third day. And he's, he's the one that's preparing us somehow in this heaven coming out down to earth somehow or another. I'm not sure how it's going to work. 
There is a way that seemeth right to a man, man but the end of, are the ways of death instead of life and glory. Let not your heart be troubled. The way may at times be rough and thorny and narrow and may seem long, but five minutes at home with Jesus will, abund will abundantly uh, compensate for all the inconveniences of our pilgrim life. The way you know, and it should be enough for us that it is the way. John 5, 14, 5 through 6, Thomas said to him, Lord, we know not whither thou goest. How can we know the way? Jesus said to him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. Hebrews 12, 2, we looked at it here recently. Looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set down before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and is set down at the right hand of the throne of God. If I have Jesus... He is writing the book on my faith. See, Jesus is the friend of sinners. Jesus is the healer of the broken heart. Jesus is the beginning and the end. He is the Alpha and the Omega. He is the shepherd of my soul. Psalm 23 says, The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. You see, He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. And so, I, I mean, we go on and on. But the first, uh, the first verse of this psalm sets the, the pattern for the whole psalm, right? Yes. He leaves me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk to the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. You see, thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil, my cup runneth oil over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I would dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Amen. Psalm 23. Shadrach read it earlier. And preached a little bit too, praise God. <laughs> Psalm 23. The first, I'm just going to go over this really quick. This is the end of the sermon. This, uh, the the, uh, the first uh, verse sets the pattern for the whole psalm. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. I shall not want for rest. For he maketh me lie down in green pastures. I shall not want for refreshment, for he leadeth me beside the still waters. I shall not want for forgiveness, for he restoreth my soul. I shall not want for guidance, for he leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. I shall not want for companionship, yea, though I walk to the valley of the shadow of death, thou art with me. I shall not want for comfort, for thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. I shall not want for sustenance, for thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. I shall not want for joy, for thou anointest my head with oil, and my cup runneth over. I shall not want for anything in this life, for surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I shall not want for anything in the life to come. For I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. That's what it is. We look to the kingdom of God, not the kingdom of men. Because I tell you what, this kingdom of men, especially this week, has got us stressed out. Amen. You know, we need to look to the kingdom of God. Because that's where our focus needs to be. That's what he was telling the disciples. You know, I'm going to go prepare a place for you guys. After that, the disciples, they didn't deny the Lord no more. Tradition says that they were going to crucify Peter on a cross. And Peter says, I'm not worthy. To be crucified like my Lord was. So they turned him upside down and crucified him upside down. You see, Peter followed him. He says, You can't come with me now, but you'll come with me later. Mm -hmm. Peter followed him. Peter was an overcomer. And that's what God calls us to be. He that overcometh shall inherit how many things? All, All things. You see, I want you to be an overcomer. You pray for me as pastor that I'm an overcomer. I mean, I struggle just like you guys do. You know? I uh, you know, see these little smart alecks on TV and... Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> You can tell when they're lying, their lips are moving, right? <laughs> but, uh, you know, 
But the thing is, is hey, I, and I want to ask you a question, Dave, before we dismiss. If you don't know Jesus today, you can get to know Him. Because you could come to Him and you can say, you know, Lord Jesus, I'm, uh, I'm not okay like I am. I'm a sinner. I need your forgiveness. See, because Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to the Father but by Him. He made a way where there was no other way to get back to God the Father. And anybody that goes to God the Father has to go through Jesus. And, and uh, the uh, appeal to the soul today is that, hey, I want you to come to Jesus. I want you to come to Jesus. Because there's no other way that we can go. I mean, you might be a good Baptist, but that won't get you into heaven. You might even be, you know, I mean, you might even have a Baptist card. That still won't get you into heaven. You know? <laughs> you have to be sealed by the very blood of Jesus Christ. And uh, God knows those who are His, the Word of God says. So, you know, He's going to recognize you when you get there. You know, you're going to say, Tim, come on in. You know, Ken, come on in. I mean, I mean we're just going to... Can you just imagine, you know? You know what the best thing about heaven is, I think? Jesus is there. You know? And He's... Uh, and I don't even know. I, I mean, I, I don't even need that big of a, a, a mansion. But he's got something prepared for us, right? Man, he's, it's going to be glorious. We're going to be with Jesus. And I, you know, just like I didn't know how uh, how good this life was going to be when I when I was born. You know, you know, the first time, and I got born again, and the glory of God came in into us, and we had to, you know, be aggravated with this life for a little while, but. We're going to heaven, folks. Yes, we are. We're going to go see Jesus because he's prepared a place for us. He told his disciples, let not your heart be troubled. You know, believe in the power of God through Jesus Christ our Lord. Is there any public decisions that need to be made today? Maybe uh, decisions of salvation, uh, baptism, church membership, those things like that. Uh, you can make your decisions publicly and um, we'll encourage you to do that. So... All right, everybody okay? Everybody got a word to say before we dismiss this morning? I do. A couple of weeks ago, my brain shut down for three days, and I was gone. And my daughter said that I called her, and I said, I don't know where I am. I'm very confused. And I'm so happy to be here. Amen. And I don't know if God was giving me a message. I don't know, but my brain is starting to come back slowly, but I don't remember any of that time. But every morning when I wake up, I say, I can't wait to you. Well, Amen. praise the Lord. Well, your heart, Amen. your heart, your brain, all that stuff, that's in the hand of the Lord, right? Yes. Your breath is in the hand of the Lord. Yes. So uh, praise God for that. Thank you for that testimony. Yeah. He's my rock, my sword, and my shield. Yeah. I will hey. trust him to the day I go home. No matter what happens on this plane, no matter who's in charge of this country or who isn't in charge of this country, that's not what we're about. We're about knowing that he's in control. Amen. Yeah, and let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. So, hey, it didn't say you possess the light, it says you are the light. So let's be the light of God. In the, and the, I didn't get into it, but later on down there in the John 14, you know, we can uh, understand how the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit all work together. I, I was just reading that this morning, and how that the Holy Spirit comes, comes in, and they will make their abode in us, and different things like that. And, uh, uh, you know, and, and they make their abode by the Holy Spirit, right? So it's a Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. So it's a, the triune God is in John 14, 15, and 16. I mean, you know, it's just an exciting, exciting section of Scripture. Uh, good, good places to memorize in there. All right. So, hey, you know, uh, let not your heart be troubled. Jesus is coming to get us. Amen. Amen. And uh, so uh, when he comes to get us, we're going to be, that's going to be a good day. So um, let, keep your mind... Uh, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you, right? 
So uh, I know that uh, uh, many of us, were, uh, including myself, were, uh, went through some disappointment and everything this week and, and uh, some just uh, a lot of emotions. But um, hey, let's keep our focus and mind on God. He's, a, he's our Savior. Amen. Uh, Brother Mike, would you pray us out of here? Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for everything you put in front of us and the path to go to you. We take what we've learned today from the pastor and the word that you've given us to look to you and not worry about the troubles that are around us, not to worry about the troubles that are inside of us, to look to you and move forward. We say these things in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen.